You are listening to the Icehouse Podcast, hosting conversations with gritty Kiwi business owners and leaders and industry leading minds. Kia ora everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the Ice House podcast. My name is Briar and today we have Richard Beaumont with us. He is the director of Ardmore Nurseries, which is based in Clevedon in Auckland, but he's actually currently joining me from Dublin Island right now, which I think is pretty cool. Um, apart from Australia, Richard, you are the first international uh, guest, so that's kind of fun. Um, Richard was on our owner manager program 58 and we're going to be talking a lot about his business journey his leadership journey and his experience with the ice house so thanks heaps Richard for joining us cheers thank you very much what time is it over there it must be what 8 30 or something like that. yeah 8 8 30 tonight so um yeah it's not too bad oh I appreciate you jumping on the podcast and, and still being keen to share the story um but we like to start um to sort of introduce yourself to listeners what who is Richard and and what are you passionate about yeah, um, so I kind of thought about this. It depends who's asking, really. So um, my kids are in bed, fortunately. Um, but if it's them, it would probably be a hut builder or a transporter. Uh, but I, I generally think um, someone who's who's up for almost anything um, would be me. Wow, that's a good answer. I like that. And can you sort of, I know it may look different at the moment being over in Dublin and you're, you're there, as we were talking about before, for a lengthy amount of time, um, but what does a day in the life of Richard normally look like? Yeah, well, it is a little bit different at the moment. Um, so yeah, since, since we're living uh, in the in the city of Dublin, quite central in, uh, in Sandy Mountain, we're over here for a year on, um, I guess, a bit of a maybe a second sort of OE with the kids uh, yeah. so they can spend some time with their uh, grandparents. Um, but yeah, generally I'm doing um, most of the the uh, work with the kids. So like dropping them off at school. I, it's nice I get to bike them to school and um, in the morning. Um, and then I'm working um, mainly from home, but I'm actually going to be going to a co-working space at the uh, Guinness uh, Enterprise Centre. Um, and working on a, a startup that came out of um, uh, when we went into lockdown at the nursery, we needed some new technology and the startup is on a robotics company called uh, Agova. So, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, cool. So you're going to spend some time in that startup as well um, while you're over there. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what my, my main work is on, on that company, not um, doing much for the nursery at the, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, totally makes sense. Uh, talking about the nursery a little bit, just to give context around that history and, and industry that you're in, um, how did Ardmore Nurseries come about and, and what's the story behind that business to start with? Yeah, so it's a um, family business. Um, so it's been been around for a while. So Ardmore Nurseries itself, uh, its current site has is, is been there 50 years. Um And prior to that, um, it was Beaumont's Nurseries, uh, which was established, I think it was uh, 1931, um, back in in, in Manurera. So it was was kind of a nice bit of legacy there. And that was um, my grandfather and his father, uh, Harry Beaumont and Arthur Beaumont. Um, And they're from Yorkshire, um, England, and came out, um, yeah, I guess for something different, um, away from the woolen mills. And um, yeah, there was different family members have owned and um, run run it. Um, so there was Barry and Alan, and then my uh, so there's my uncles, and then my parents, uh, John and Susie, and then uh, it's at the moment it's Cara, uh, my sister, and myself who are the uh, owners and running it at the moment. Um, yeah, and I guess a, a bit of the story. It's um, so it's a whole wholesale nursery. Um, so B two B, and growing primarily for the landscape industry, and uh, I I, th- I think it's just that, yeah the families had a real passion for plants, um, and that's why everyone's kept um, mm-hmm. stayed in the family and kept kept with that passion for plants and and, and growing. Um, yeah, it's a a great um, industry to be involved in as well, where everyone's um, I guess really uh, happy I think and yeah. and and nice to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And and what does it look like today? How many staff, you know, would be involved and what's your involvement in the company? 
Yeah, I I, th I think um, when I go there, I think it's always uh, it's a friendly, happy place to work. Um, there's lots of plants everywhere. Mm. Um, there's a great team culture. Um, we spend a lot of um, you know work and and building that culture, which has been I think uh, really beneficial. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of work with the Kaizen Institute on continuous improvement and uh, looking at how we could do things um, better has been a, a kind of key key uh, driver there. And um, yeah, which has has been great to see the staff involvement with that as well. Um, yeah. You know, over the years and everyone getting behind it. Um, I guess my involvement because I'm overseas at the moment um, is I still stay connected but um yes a little bit uh, a little bit more distant at the moment yeah for sure no that makes sense um with the whole family business it's always an interesting dynamic um but a but a great dynamic and many of our alumni businesses come from family businesses um yeah but but wanted to sort of ask a question if you could give yourself a heads up knowing what you know now when it comes to sort of running and, and you know running a business what would that be what would that heads up be well yeah um <laughs> so yeah so I think uh pro probably about focus um and uh yes yeah, so being as focused as you can um as early as possible on uh what it is that you that you really want to do and and really where you want to head um mm. i mean there's so many uh, <laughs> uh analogies i guess that come out of the, um the plant industry but yeah you're to, to get out of the weeds right you know mm -hmm. so yeah that, taking that bigger picture approach um probably scheduling some probably more regular workshops on working on the business um maybe early on um didn't, yeah that would have been probably helpful um right. and push on probably time to reduce tasks um yeah time goes faster than you think um but i think probably um yeah maybe a, you know i was giving i guess thinking back and yeah giving us a heads up is like the work we did on culture was was really good, great and you know maybe at the time i think we probably thought oh is this going to play out how we because you know it was, to us and what we're doing but yeah. it was really beneficial and um and again all the kaizen continuous improvement work we did you know has really paid off and um yeah i think it's great seeing um when you know staff come up with a better way of doing something and um and you know they're really proud of it and and it continues it's and then you know it's it's a bit of uh something that they've left behind for new team members to take on which is great yeah absolutely yeah it's so cool to hear that the work you put in for the culture piece up front which like you said can sometimes be an unknown of what the outcomes will be from that has been really beneficial too so yeah thank you for sharing that I wanted to touch a little bit on um, still talking about Ardmore Nurseries here a, a key part of your guys purpose which is to provide leadership and contributing to the work of of parliament um, and the commissioner on the environment what does that look like what what has it looked like and why is thought leadership a key, a key part of the purpose of the business yeah so so i guess um probably came from our purpose statement um a, a bit a bit of there so um so which is amplifying plant life um and, and free thinking so uh yeah, from that we like well we you know how are we going to really live live this and so um, that involvement <laughs> with the commission was in regards to pest plants and so you know really taking um, a lead role in that and making sure that you know uh, we don't have um, you know growing any of these obviously and then giving feedback um, to to that work that was being um done we felt was really um important mm. uh and then i guess like in other ways on the ground that you know leadership um is really giving the opportunity to uh, others in the team and and lifting everyone um up as has been i think a, a key a key driver there uh yeah and i think i think maybe like on a you know like what what does that really mean i suppose i i try to uh 
turn things around for people and ask you know a lot of questions of them and how they would do it and mm -hmm. instead of like of giving the answers and um yeah i guess it's that opportunity to for them to show their leadership skills because they're part of a team and they're going to be you're not going to be there all the time so they're going to be leading others whether it's even one person they still need to you know develop these and so i think that's where that sharing of that knowledge creates that um thought leadership yeah brilliant yeah that's really cool and i like that idea of actually asking people what do you think about this how would you do this rather than just sort of going cool here's a b c and d of of how to do it uh, i think it definitely helps in that thought leadership space um i want to chat about your recent travel so you've recently been traveling um to a few international events um, on robotic solutions for agriculture um, and focusing on boosting productivity, reducing environmental footprint. Um, I'm sure, no doubt, probably linked to the startup that you you talked about at the start of our chat. Um, what what were some of the personal takeaways from these sorts of events and and, and what does this sort of new space look like for you? Yeah, oh, well, big question. You know, sorry. It, yeah, no, yeah, big question. Uh, so, yeah, I find it really exciting. Um, cool. I, I mean, I love the new technology, and I um, there's so many solutions that are, that are out there for you know real problems that uh, everyone uh, has. And yeah, so I guess um, my other hat. So one of the founders of Agova, um, mm. you should check it out, Agova.com. Awesome. Um, and so yeah, we've got a robotic solution. Um, <clears throat> and that's really why I'm going to these different places. And um, I think, yeah, my big takeaway is probably around, um, I guess, uh, for any businesses to to help with these um, new technologies and startups and and with the adoption. And it's it's about embracing this new technology and and being part of it. And if you can be part of the journey uh, with these companies, then you can help um, with those solutions and making sure that they're the best to meet industry needs. Mm, um right. because without that kind of partnership um then you know we're not going to get as a quick um or as good an outcome than then we could if we i guess work it apart so yeah, i think that's probably my main one yeah yeah that's cool I, I yeah i like asking this when we're talking on an international scale how how does new zealand stack up then um against the rest of the world when it comes to to agri tech and and putting things in place for productivity environmental all that sort of thing yeah, I mean, right up there with the best. So wow, cool, yeah. cool to hear. Yeah, 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 definitely. So I think, um, yeah, there's a lot of great examples. I mean, I think, you know, if anyone's looking, going on Callahan and having a look around at some of the stuff that's coming out and through there. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah, we're definitely uh, in that space. And I guess everyone around the world is approaching um, problems a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, I think the New Zealand um you know businesses have have some good options for um what is needed in our market so mm -hmm. uh even though there might be solutions um offshore that can do the job um it's probably sometimes still a bit easier with a new zealand provider because of that um homegrown support um yeah. uh it's still potentially a bit of an issue for, for certain tech things it just depends i guess where every tech company and as on their journey yeah for sure but yeah that local sort of business um side of things is important but yeah yep. that's cool to hear really great to hear actually um that we are stacking up well in terms of international um you know agri-tech and things that are coming out of that space because it's definitely booming at the moment and um i, I think personally only going to get bigger in terms of the technology that comes out um so especially around like you know environmental footprint and, and productivity um so so important I can tell you're very passionate about it, which is which is cool. What what was the journey like of of saying or the aha moment behind the startup? Oh, um, yeah. So <clears throat> COVID. So we we had um, we went from thirty five staff down to five staff. Wow, that's uh, huge. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, we got a bit of an exemption at the end because we weren't a um, essential business um, when COVID hit. So we were allowed a skeleton crew just to look after the plants. At first I thought, oh no, this is just going to be me um, at the mm -hmm. nursery by myself, like, <laughs> looking yeah. after everything. Um, 
but yeah, the, to yeah, to look after the plants and with with five people, it was um, it was definitely a challenge. And um, so I was, had quite a lot of time to um, think uh, out there in my <coughs> isolated five acres by myself. Yeah, wow. Um, and we, yeah, we would. Uh, I was talking to a bunch of engineering friends and um, thinking, hey, we've got to find some better ways of doing things. And um, Simon, who's the uh, other founder of Gova, uh, was like, hey, I think I can help out. And we kind of were going through a bit of a list of, you know, biggest problems and uh, weeding was one of them. And uh, we didn't really know that we we're going to come up with the robot to start with. Uh, but yeah, then uh, with looking at weeding in the field nursery and it made sense um, with the kind of, I guess, technology that was available. And yeah, and it just was created from there. Really cool. Yeah, I love that just sort of step by step that's sort of um, developed and um, yeah, no doubt is an exciting space and industry to be in, that's for sure. Cool. I love hearing that. Oh, well, all the best for that venture too. And I love how um, well aligned they are, you know, they sort of link very easily. So um, I'm sure you're enjoying yeah, sort of working on both. Yeah, all the best for that. That's really cool. Um, wanted to change gears a bit and talk a little bit about your experience with the Ice House. Um, awesome to have you part of our owner manager program alumni um, and part of that alumni community. Uh, going right back to the start, how did you hear about the Ice House? Yeah, I think it was my um, sister that told me and um, su suggested that, uh, uh, that I should do that owner manager program. Oh. Um, yeah, so yes, yeah, probably probably thought I needed a bit, bit more upskilling or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're in business together and she's like, you need to go on a course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. And so you you did, you jumped on the owner manager program. Uh, what What impact did that program have on you as an owner and a leader? Yeah, I think uh, the the separation from the business um, was really good. Uh, how how the courses yeah were took took well all the business owners um, away from their business and um, you know and your family and everything. So that separation was great. Um, cementing a lot of the work that we'd we'd already done, I think, was really beneficial. Um, and and knowing that you're on the right track or right path. Uh, and then the networking was was uh, yeah was great um, and really helpful. Uh, having having a group that you could you know talk about similar things that you were going through um, yeah it was kind of amazing on the course as we went um, some you know hefty things that um, different uh, owners were going through and you're like but also could put in perspective. Um, so some of your things were like, oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing, right? When you can chat about the highs and lows with others and be like, oh, okay, maybe this isn't as bad. But um, I, yes. I'm always, always amazed to hear like, you know, all of, all of the people in, in the cohorts, well, majority come from different industries um yet the the challenges and sometimes opportunities are very very much the same or similar um so yes. yeah it's it's cool to hear that um with your experience too um were there any changes that you made from a business perspective or maybe even a lifestyle perspective that came from the program uh yeah well, we were fortunate enough to um in a position in the industry to get a operations manager um great. which was yeah. which was great so um, and I, I guess um, part of doing the owners managers program also was around that time and then and thinking of coming and living overseas for a year. Um, mm -hmm. So that just helped uh, with that and, and giving the um, confidence, um, you, you know, in, in the business that going away for a year would would be okay. And then also giving me the confidence to um, spend more time in, in the startup at Gova um and doing a whole cool. whole lot of kind of um business work I guess on that program helped with with um a, a new startup as well yeah oh that's so cool to hear yeah that's that's great it's given you confidence in a couple areas you know in lifestyle moving over um to Dublin for a year and uh in business actually starting something fresh and um pouring some new ideas into that, which is exciting. Yeah. Have, have you stayed yeah. in touch with your, um, you talked about networking. Have you stayed in touch with anyone in your cohort or not quite? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess um, we've got a WhatsApp group like every every uh, um, group, yeah. which is is great. And um, I mean, being overseas has been a little bit um, tricky. No one's coming and visit. Um, <laughs> but no, no, um, I, I have, and um, obviously, I think um, once I get back, it'll be easier to go to some more of the industry events and stuff. Yeah, for sure. No, it's cool. And that WhatsApp group chat is awesome and the online ways to stay in touch is definitely really helpful. Um, so yeah, yes, no, that's, yeah, that's really cool to hear. Cool. Um, well, yeah, great to hear that it's had an impact on your um, your lifestyle and, and your businesses as well. Um, would love to hear, you know, there's obviously a lot going on in the industry. Um, what what excites you about the future of, of Agri, Agri-Tech um, and your businesses as well? Yeah, I think um, it's really coming to the fore now. Uh, it just, I mean, it has to because of the environment. Um, yeah. And I think because it's it's so much more in everyone's day-to-day lives, um, it means that there's going to be more, I guess, uh, R&D spending and investment in, in this space. Uh, and just generally people wanting um, to be in horticulture um, again, which is is great. Um, so I, th- I think that makes it um, become more of a, a career path for people again, which is is really exciting. Um, and as as far as the technology, I think uh, there's it hasn't had a lot of um, maybe uh, at the cutting edge um, sort of investment. Uh, I mean, I could be a bit wrong there, um, but maybe that's just a, a bit of a feeling where that's um, been been put back into there because, again, the environment is um, at the fore and probably the, the uh, issue with it around the increase in population and the amount of um, food that needs to be produced. So we've got to figure out how to do, do it better than we're currently doing it because some of our practices um aren't the best but I, I guess that's the same for all industries <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah it makes complete sense and I think industries that are supporting the environment supporting um with environmental and social issues um and that is a lot of what the agri tech space is doing is definitely getting more support so it's exciting no doubt yeah. there'll be a lot of growth in the industry for sure yeah yeah definitely yeah oh, which is cool. great yeah, no, that's so cool to hear. Oh, well, thank you for giving us some insight into your world, Richard, and into your into your two businesses. Um, really cool to hear that you're so passionate about those spaces and and um, seeing, you know, great solutions for the environment and for productivity come from that. Um, and yeah, just awesome to have you part of the community. And um, on this podcast, we just love sharing stories from a whole bunch of different industries, backgrounds, family businesses. And so, yeah, really cool to hear yours this week. So thanks for being on the Ice House podcast. Cheers, Ray. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers, to, cheers to Ice House. And hopefully I'll uh, see, see people at an uh, industry event next year sometime. Absolutely. We'll welcome you back for sure. <laughs> Have a great Brilliant. time in Dublin. Um, and yeah, enjoy that time with your family. Thanks, Richard.